Hello. Wow. Hi. It's good to be here. Um, it's always exciting to be here and because people talk about what's a, either what's just happened or what's about to happen. And we're going to just have a conversation about stuff that's happening and about to happen. So um, I'm Bree. I have a company called MakerBot. We just started about a year and a half ago. And Esther has uh, trained with cosmonauts to go to space and invested in tons of stuff. So um, let's go, let's cut straight to space. OK. Um, so you're trained to be a cosmonaut. You were in, where, you were in Russia, is in that right? In Star City, Russia. And then, and then how close did you get to being in space? Well, not that close. I, I was backing up Charles Simone, and mm -hmm. he's a nice guy, so I couldn't really wish to go. What I did wish, <laughs> he, he was recently married, so I wished that his new wife would call and say, darling, I'm pregnant. You let that other one go instead. <laughs> but she didn't. So I'm fully trained, and... I'm short about 40 million. So <laughs> what I'm hoping is, and I'm investing in commercial space companies, so XCore Aerospace is building rockets. Space Adventures is organizing. They organized mm -hmm. that training. They organized Charles and the other space tourists' trips. And they're now working with Boeing. And so as things get cheaper, you know, with luck, my assets will go like this, and the price will go like that. And I'll go. So. My goal is to have a robot in the moon, like 2019, building this, like the, the moon colony. Do you okay. think, like, will, will we have humans there before, I get, before the robots get there? Or do you think it'll be after? I think it'll be a good race. <laughs> and yeah, there's, uh, there's a, there's a, there are a bunch of different efforts. Yeah. And if, if any billionaires want to know about them and fund them, come talk to me. So. Um, in terms of, uh, you make a, a bunch of investments, and, uh, and you have to choose which ones to invest in and all this kind of thing. I mean, I, I, as somebody who hasn't made investments, what I, I mean, I've, I've, the only thing I can think of that's similar is I have a hacker space, and we have to invite new members, and we kind of right. run them through the, the ringer, and they have to, we basically have to decide if like, we would give them their house keys to be able to let them into the hacker space. Because it's really hard to kick them out once you've let them in. Well, we just, once we get them in, we want them to, yeah, we, well, yeah. Uh, yeah well, I don't think we, no, you can't, once they're in, they're in. So I was wondering, like, what's your tr criteria when you invest in, so in something, like, well, be how do you choose? Because it's my own money, it, it, I can make mistakes, but I don't need to apologize. And that's really nice. So I don't, I don't have committees, I don't really have formal criteria. My interests change. I'm, I did Flickr and all kinds of cool sort of internet things, but now I'm more focused on health stuff and space and, and various odd things here and there. But the first is I don't have enough money. If I had a huge amount of money, I'd just want a big return on it. But I'm an angel investor, and so when I give people money, I also want to give them time. So I invest in companies that excite me personally, where I like the people, where it's not redundant, because if someone else is going to do it, why bother? And I've made mistakes. Sometimes I liked, I didn't like someone as much by the end as I liked them in the beginning. But by and large, when, when an investment of mine folds, I consider it a success if I like the person. And, you know, I don't regret I did it. I learned something, the person was good, it was a worthy effort. It's Making mistakes is the cost of, of the ones that work out, like Flickr and MedStory, which is sold to Microsoft, and PowerSet, which is also part of Bing now, and things like that. And a, a, a bunch of your investments are, have to do with like hardware. They're not software that's dependent necessarily on users and online revenue, which is something we're at Web2 Expo. But yeah. how, how, do, how, is, how are hardware and like, you know, jet propulsion systems how, when, you, how, when, you, when you look at those, what, how are those different in, when you view those? Well, one problem with jet propulsion systems is they're very capital intensive. Yeah. So, you know, unlike Foursquare or Fuel. Meetup or, yeah. Um, so I don't do very many of those, and they tend to be sort of flukes. Space Adventures is actually a broker. They don't build rockets, and so they're, they're more typical of what I do. 
Uh, Icon Aircraft is a light sport aircraft. That's also a real machine. You know, those are kind of against my criteria, but I do them anyway because I think they're really cool. And again, neither of them was redundant. Xcore Aerospace, the founder, came out of Intel. And a lot of the space companies are either very secretive or very flashy. And one problem with the space market is, unlike this market, it's not really competitive. There are people in it competing, but it's not a, it's not a competitive market where it's not fluid or liquid yet. Uh, but I really, really like Jeff Grayson. He just was a solid engineer as opposed to, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't trying to build his own company. He was trying to build a rocket. Right. Um, I, I, I like the other guys too, by the way, and I hope yeah. to fly on all of their machines. <laughs> uh, in terms of, so uh, I have another, so let's see. Let's switch over to medicine a little bit. Okay. So it's on my agenda in the next 10 years to have like a subdermal LED display that tells me like how much sugar is in my blood, just because I'm curious like how that affects me. How, like, what do you think are the biggest changes coming up soon in medicine and the way that we, and, and becoming healthier? Yeah. Well, the, the subdermal display is, is totally doable along with, and, and not just your glucose, but yeah. all, all kinds of things. And that's kind of really cool. You can see the impact of exercise. You can see the impact of getting stressed out uh, for whatever reason, the impact of yeah. climbing up the stairs to your four-story high apartment in Brooklyn or whatever. Um, so there's, there's all that measurement. And then there's the social part, sort of the medical foursquare, mm -hmm. where you... You, you compete with people or you collaborate with them to, you know, we walked more miles this month or our team dropped five more pounds than the other team or this group. And, and doing that and recording it and, you know, I'd rather have my self-esteem based on how healthy I was than whether I bought a lot of stuff at the Gap or something. And so try, trying to make people compete for stuff that is good for them long term. We're unfortunately very short term, so we're good at being motivated by short term things. And if those lead to long term health, that's really good. Buying too much stuff at the gap leads to long term debt, and that's not so good. I really think there's something there with like being able to monitor your own health and have data on it, because so much of like, you know, I ate a cookie and I have no idea what the impact is, yeah. except that it tastes really good. But if I, kn if I knew, like, oh yeah, that's going to you know, do something, it would, it would, it would have an impact. If you saw it, yeah. Yeah. Well, um, so this is a Fitbit. And oh, yeah, you have good yeah. gadgets. I'm not an investor, but, and it shows how many steps I walked and how many miles that was. It's two and a half miles today, exactly so far. So every once in a while, I'll see stairs and an escalator. <laughs> and... It's, it's just on the margin, but I'll think, hmm, 50 more steps if I take the <laughs> stairs. And it, it has this impact on the margin. Or uh, should I walk or take the subway? It, yeah, it, you have data that, yeah. where you didn't have data before. Right, and, then, and so you get that reward at the end of the day. You say, oh, 9,642. Yeah, there's a real difference between check, you know, checking in at the gap and then Twitter, or, and then like against like Twittering, okay, I took 5,979 steps today. That's two totally different kind of like, like one has like, I'd be really proud it's of that It's an achievement, one. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I, I set up this to tweet once a week. And then I, I couldn't really figure out how to stop it, so I decided I'd better start recording my swimming as well or people would think I was lazy. How do you record swimming? You, you type it in. Oh, okay. Yeah, kind of disappointing. <laughs> I did, in fact, wash the previous one by mistake. It didn't and survive. that's why it was previous. Gotcha. And then you had another gadget. At, do you oh, have yeah, it in your pocket? Sure. Mm -hmm. You took this out, and the entire room just went like, yeah, well, this, what Star Trek episode so was that on? I'm actually trying to get this to the Chilean miners. It's light-emitting earplugs. It's from Finland, where they suffer a lot from like seasonal, seasonal affective, affective disorder, yeah. which is the, the darkness depression. 
So these don't shine on you. You actually stick them in your ears you and they your shine ear. into your ears. And I don't want to do this for too long because if you do it in the morning, it wakes you up. If you do it in the afternoon, it gives you insomnia. It's good against jet lag. So you can't sleep with them? No. And in fact, 10 minutes is worth about three hours in the sunlight. And I asked the makers, so what happens if you wear them for two hours? And he said they hadn't even tried it, which surprised me. Uh, they're new. Hmm. And they don't ship yet to the US. But seriously, I am, I've talked to the people in NASA who are talking to the people in Chile about the miners, and it's kind of slowly wending its way through the bureaucracy, because I think it would make a huge difference. Uh, I'm totally going home and getting some throwies and yeah. sticking them in my well, ears. <laughs> Someday you'll have to pay royalties. <laughs> but you, you come from Seattle, and yeah. people in the north understand that you need light, you need light in the winter. Um, in terms, so we're, uh, I, have a, I'll ask, I have another question for you. Um, as someone who's advised a lot of companies and gotten intimate with people who run companies and start companies and move companies along, what, do you, if, uh, what, if, if, what kind of advice would you have for people who either are just beginning a company or are just, just you know, they're in that sleepless stage of trying to get yeah. it all done? Do you, have, do you give regular advice on it? Is there, is there, is there a trend you see with, with young companies? Well, the first is, you know, don't go to somebody famous for advice. Go to somebody <laughs> who knows you, mm -hmm. who, who can actually give you specific useful advice, uh, rather than kind of generic advice you can find in a book. Um, you know, be, be focused. Yeah. Don't, don't go all over the place. Don't try to do everything at once. Start with one thing that will... You know, just as you should start with a person you know who can then get you to a person who's slightly more connected or whatever that you don't know. In the same way, start with a market you know, start with something you can do, and then get the resources to go the next step. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, don't feel disappointed if you're not Bill Gates or Sergey Brin or Dennis Crowley. There's lots of really respectable companies that are not, not the most famous in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and know the market you're selling into. If it doesn't excite you personally, if you don't understand it, find a market that you do. So you've actually done, had your genome sequenced. So let's say we could actually replicate you just for fun. Uh, and, yeah. you could, and, that person, and that replicant would actually follow your instructions. And not just in blue plastic. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, and what would you, and, and that person had to start a business. What would you boss that other you into starting okay, a business? Okay, so if I doing? had a second or third life, yeah, um, I definitely do a biotech business, mm -hmm. and then I'd take another one, and I'd do some kind of space business, <laughs> <laughs> and um, then I'd have another one, and I'd have them start a clinical research organization in Russia. Mm -hmm. Why I Russia? Would, because they really need it. Okay. And I, if it was a real replica of me with the brain, too, it would speak Russian. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd send another one to Africa to do something with cell phones, which are the capital equipment of that market. And That's pretty good. Yeah. Well, and I'd probably have another one do some kind of advertising thing to get really rich and <laughs> fund the ones that were in Africa. Uh, just to fund the replicant habit. Um, well, we're nearing the end of our time, okay. but I could actually talk to you for hours. So uh, thank you for taking well, the time. Well, we to... can afterwards. That sounds thank you. great. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.